Okay. Started mine a little under five minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you got all the preamble. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, welcome to uh, Aggressive Tendencies, our uh, adult D&D &D group running uh, vaguely modified Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. I'm Phil. Uh, I've been jamming for about two years now. Um, my sister usually plays with us, but she is uh, not available today, so she won't make it. But we'll start with uh, introductions, starting with Steve. I'm Steve. I play Dripper, a Kenku. Uh, oh my god. Arcane Trickster. Arcane Trickster. That's it. And Trish? I can't hear Trish. Oh. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I'm Trish, and I um, play Aromanthia, a Dragonborn Monk. Still can't hear me because of the dog. Yeah. Our dog has decided now's the best time to play with its food dish. Uh, and then um, Carissa. Hi, I'm Carissa, and I play Heelzebub, who is a warlock, healer, fun person. <laughs> and also, well, the brother of Tia. Today's snacks are, again, brought to you by Freshy. Uh, Oaxaca Bowl. We are not sponsored by Freshy, but we would take both discounts and a sponsorship gladly. Mm -hmm. Or some kind of catering deal. And until recently, not pictured here, but uh, has joined us now, Spencer. It's not a casting coach, I promise you. <laughs> I play a Yonti Paladin with the Oath of the Ancients uh, path, and I'm trying to kindle the light through acts of mercy and kindness. So throw that guy a rope. Maybe cut down the tree. Maybe not cut down that tree. To be decided. Depends. Depends on on what is the kindest thing. Says the face smashing Paladin. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is fun. All right. So last time we got together, um, you the, the party in, ended up having an encounter with a lake monster. You convinced the lake monster that um, the creature that had given it uh, sentience um, was dead and would not come take that sentience away so it could stop attacking. Um, took the path to Good Mead. And uh, on the way through Bryn Shander... Uh, stopped for a brief uh, shopping expedition. Well, mostly a getting rid of vendor junk expedition. And then um, discovered that some mead had been lifted from uh, the town of Goodmead. Uh, followed some tracks into the woods. Followed a different set of tracks. And found a cave with uh, a, a verbeeg, which is a giant, uh, living in it. Um the giant and its friend, the ogre, and a cave bear attacked the party. And just as the party was finishing their epic encounter, uh, another giant popped by to say hi. And the party ended up having to fight that as well. Uh, so we rejoined the party, standing next to a bunch of goats and a bunch of very large dead bodies in the cave, you guys should be seeing the Verbeeg lair. I see a black screen because I'm not on the map yet. Oh, okay. Um, you should be on the map. Oh, wait, no, I got to scroll over. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Now I see the pen. There we go. So, as you guys are uh, standing in the cave, where would you like to go? Or what would you like to do? Well, maybe we need to take a bit of a short rest here. We might want to make sure that the area is safe to take a short rest. Uh, okay. I you can wanna go, go hey, out. do you want to send Dave out to do that? Is Dave going to have like the ability to do that, or or should I? You can you know? because of your spell, you can put yourself in um, Dave. Dave's head. Dave's, yeah, in Dave's head to a 
um, and you can give him commands to a maximum distance of 100 feet. So he should be pretty good through the cave. Can do a quick scout and I'll tell you what he sees. Sure. Okay. All right. So let's send him over here into right. the stinky hole there or whatever. Yeah. So this is a stinky hole. Um, it's filled to a depth of five feet with bones and trash and filth. Uh, looks like they were using it as their uh, their landfill. Doesn't seem to be anything of interest in here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's send him down this hallway here. Okay. So as you head down the hallway and come around the corner, um, you see a uh, suspended from the ceiling of this chamber by a series of ropes and pulleys are six baskets. Clustered near the south wall are three wooden casks carved with Goodmead's heraldic symbol, a drinking mug made of a cut-off section of horn with an antler handle, upright and centered. Okay. What's this in the corner here? Uh, that is a, a narrow passageway. Looks like it was carved by some type of smaller creature. Okay. Um, maybe maybe we should check that one out ourselves. I don't want to risk putting Dave into that small area and then having some like goblin or something killing him, right? Jump out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna swing him back around here. Okay. Go around this area. Like I don't know. Why you're doing that? Can I ask? Does anybody think these animals would be able to survive on their own? Should we release them from the pen or not? I believe that the town is missing them. I think that we, we should bring them back, back to the town. Could be useful. You you do know that people are having difficulty feeding themselves. Uh, all right. So to the south, I think uh, goats were on the list of things missing. Those from the last town. Yeah. Uh, to the south, you see uh, an eight foot high, five foot wide passage that has a bunch of holes carved into its walls. Um, looks like at some point this was some type of burial site, um, but Dave finds mostly uh, sort of disassociated bones. Looks like uh, wild animals have been in here and have uh, picked the corpses apart. There is a frozen river that runs north and south here. And I wasn't pressing my push to talk there. I'm sorry. My bad. No worries. <clears throat> to the north, the along the frozen stream, the or well, actually, you're 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 where the tunnel splits. The stream follows a dark north northwood tunnel, and uh, so to the north. You see the frozen stream ends at a seven foot deep frozen pool at the back of a dark cave. Trapped beneath the pool's ice is a stone statue of a smiling young man, naked except for a well-placed oak leaf with his face turned towards the sky. And to the south, you see an entrance to the cave. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't see any animals or any danger or, or anything in my little flight. So nope. I come back and tell everybody and figure that, yeah, maybe we can do a short rest. Um, Dave does have the feeling that there's one area of the um, cave that hasn't been explored yet. Sort of in this general area. Oh, oh was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I didn't see that with the shadows. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Carved steps on the south side climb five feet to this 10 foot high, 15 foot square room, which has narrow natural exits in the east and west walls. The middle of the room is a rectangular stone block, seven feet long, four feet wide, and three feet tall. Pictographs on the wall of the chamber tell the tale of a tribe's journey through mighty mountains across 
Perilous Tundra. The um, the pictographs show uh, the chieftain sort of leading a group, and in either hand, uh, in either one of the chieftain's hands are um, items that are radiating light. One seems to be a small sphere, and the other one appears to be a um, a stick, maybe. I know about you guys. That sounds like magic items. I think we should go check that out. So out of character, think, of course. It's safe enough. We can explore and then rest, or we can rest and then explore. Or, yeah, either either way, it seems fairly safe. Nothing, nothing jumped out and ate the owl. So. Well, I do only have twelve hit points. So let's rest and then explore. The nice thing about the cave that you guys are hanging out in is over top of the fire is an entire goat sort of on a spit that's slowly roasting. So you guys could have a really nice meal here. Oh, oh we, are. we are. We we can't take that back to town. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that could be somebody's favorite goat, and that would just be terrible for them. So you guys four yeah. H club's gonna be let down. Yeah. So you guys do your best to make the evidence vanish as you take a short rest. Feel free to roll hit dice. Um your bard is still with you, so feel free to roll a D6 as well. Eucharist is 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 with you guys in the cave here. Yeah, I'm gonna approach. Oh, names overlapping. Ye who has a super long name that wraps around. Ocarist? Yeah, Ocarist and Dripper. Uh, offer them a lay on hands of four points each. Uh, let me let me see what my four hit dice do for me here. Before you do that, sorry, uh, wrong push to talk button. Before you do that. Make sure that, um, uh, just let me do, um, I have 5d6 before the healing, uh, the short rest starts, so I can give you some. And she'll get those back immediately after the short rest. Oh, okay. There's three for you, there's ten. Okay, so ten. So I'll only use two hit dice to get up the full hit points on, okay? Okay, sounds good. And then who else is down? I was. I used three hit dice. If I get like four, I'll be close. Ocarist is down. Yeah. And Ocarist is down too. Yeah. All right. I'll use two for Ocarist. Did you use your d6? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Ocarist has six more. Spencer, maybe throw your lay on hands on Ocarists, right? Yeah, because uh, Ocarist is at 15 right now. I don't have the ability to add those to her character sheet, so could somebody do that for me? Yeah. Right? Okay, well, <clears throat> if Dripper's fullest, I got eight that I'm offering. I'll take them. That'll fill me up. I only need five or six. Then I won't do my last uh, hit dice. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at Ocarus at sitting at nine. She's at fifteen now because she got another six from. And she hasn't used any um, of her hit dice yet. So uh, I'm putting it out there. Six. I'll, I'll leave it to Phil to say whether they're taken or not, and then I'll knock the eight off my my resource shit. Okay. And she's gonna use one hit die, and then I'll let you know how many she needs once she does that. Ocarist. Are we going to play her in combat, or are we going to, like, send her home with the goats or something? She could be a goat herder. Oh, we have a plan. Never mind. Hit die. All right. So that will put her... So I can she, also she cast your... her wounds at level two. Which I'll also get right back so immediately. The your your eight lay on hands were consumed. 
Roger that. I'll knock it. Do you get two? Percent? Nobody else. Needs, nobody else needs anything more. Correct. I'm good at one hit point. You're. I'm full. I'm holding ten in reserve. Just in case. Good thinking. Oh, that was supposed to be at level two, but that's okay. So, Trish, you're full now, and I'll reset my spells. All right. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Celestial clerics are huge short rest. Machines. A short a short rest gets them all of their stuff back and their spells. So if they've got anything left, that's nice. All right. It's work. So you guys have a nice, a nice rest, a really filling meal. Um, the, uh, the, the dense protein makes you feel warm for the first time in probably about a week as you guys have had a really filling non fish based meal. Um, and not rations. Yeah. All right. Where do you want to go? Let's go and let's go investigate where I got Dave sitting right now. All right. Okay. I, we can't see Dave's vision, so you have to point. You're going to have to lead us. I can. I can lead us now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna also watch for traps. Okay. As I move forward, I'm um, going to be close to the back. What role is that? Investigation. Is Catherine doing? Yeah, investigation. Um, she's going to hang out with the goats. She's, uh, she's learning poetry. From them. All right. So you come into the, the, the room. There is a, um, it's a large stone sarcophagus, um, with a lid on it. It looks well, undisturbed. You have a plan. We have a silly So, check for traps. I check for traps. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will take off advantage. What is your roll? Oh, I found no traps. I. Nope. What am I even in. looking at here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good. <laughs> it's a big rock. All right. Why would someone trap? Or put a trap in a sarcophagus. Yeah, like like that'd be ridiculous. Seriously, go ahead, man. Open it up. All right, <clears throat> I, I got something for this. Strength check from Sil, please. <laughs> exactly. All right, so Sil, Wait, you grab what? the the lid and you push. Um, you feel like it might give, but it's not a thing that you can do alone. All that dust and grease is made of glue. So who's going to help? I have nine strength. I mean, I can help, but... I'll help. I've got 12. Okay. And you guys are all just going to try and lift it together? Together? Okay. okay. Roll me strength checks. Everybody yep. who's involved. Hey, I didn't roll one this time. Nice. All right. So you guys all sort of get under the, the edge of the sarcophagus and push, and it moves and slides a little bit. You get it about this far. Um, it's going to take another try to uh, to get it open. You guys were almost at the combined DC. All right, that's a good start. 26, 39. If I would punch it, it'd be fine. But yeah. <laughs> just, just lifting is not my thing. All right, so this time you guys give it a shove and something about how you'd moved it last time makes it a lot easier. The, um, the, the lid sort of slides off and you see... Uh, undisturbed the a, a body of a chieftain um obviously uh used to be female given uh, given the dress and uh crossed across her chest are two hands one hand is holding a small sphere the other hand is holding a uh, a stick I 
A stick? What kind of stick? Are either of those things magical? Does, I mean, anybody, have a, stick. does anybody have a way to detect magic? Or anything? I think I do. Hang on, hang on. I can. I think I get to cast this at will, too. Give me one second. We're trying to figure it out. I have detect magic at will. Nice. Both the small sphere and the stick give off very powerful magic auras. Sphere or spear? Sphere. Small right. marble like thing. Uh I touch it. I'm a thief. Fuck it. <laughs> Reach in and you, which one? Um the sphere. All right, you reach in, you touch the sphere. The surface of it is um, kind of glossy and slippery. Um, it does not explode or kill you. I'll okay. take the other thing. All right, you grab the wand. Um, as you pull the wand uh, out of the chieftain's hands, you hear whispers all around you. Um you have a plus one wand of the war mage. Nice. No indication on what this uh, shiny rock that I like is, eh? I can identify it. Give me one second. That's the other thing I can cast at will. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I don't have identify. Sorry. Does, does anybody in the group have identify? I was going to ask you if not Catherine yet. Has. I don't think Catherine has it. Let's just check. No. I think I get it next level. Okay. Um, I'll hold on. I'll hold on to the shiny rock until we figure out what right. it is. You reach in, you grab the shiny rock. As you pull the shiny rock out, you hear whispers in your head. Not the rock I was thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Am I going crazy? Uh, you're not what sure. did the whisper say? Hey, um, this thing? Do you guys hear that? They're unintelligible. You're not quite sure what they, what that was. You hear the noise? Um, roll. Mm -hmm. Arcana? Yeah, you can roll an Arcana check if you'd like. Sorry, Krissa. At least we're getting the low rolls out of the way now. Um, you've you've heard of uh, dangers in Tomb Raiding. You're not sure if you've encountered one of them or not. But you can continue. There doesn't appear to be anything else of interest in the sarcophagus with the chieftain. I forgot to ask: Was there anything on the giants that we fought, or not? Or we already searched them too? You already searched them. I remember. Okay, I guess I'll just hold on to the uh, to the pebble yeah. until we figure out what it is. Are Sphere. You you can spend some time with it at your next short rest, and you should be able to figure out some of what it does. Where to next? Uh, well, I let everybody know that through the passageway on our right-hand side is where the, uh, the uh, beer or meat or whatever we were looking for was. Okay. I think there's a card okay. back there. Can I, can I attempt to lift one? I want to gauge the weight if, to see if it's something I could carry to the cart or if we should roll it somehow. Okay. Um, what is your carry capacity? I don't know. It's like five times your strength score, right? Is it? Uh, let me pull up the handbook here. Yeah. Hi. Let's just look it up. 
carrying capacity. Oh, it's your strength times 15. Okay. Which for you is pretty crazy. 375. 375. All right. So you walk over to the the keg and um this is a large keg and you pick it up and it, you feel like it weighs approximately half of what you can carry. A little bit more. This is All really right. heavy. Wasn't there a cart somewhere? Yeah, you got to get it to the cart. Yeah, there's a cart at, at, at three, I think. All right, so I, I got to check uh, as many barrels as there are, make sure that give a head count of how many there are that are full, not empty, to, to figure out which ones we need to load onto the cart and there are take them back. Full barrels. You're right, Trish. I need to give more space. Um, you do remember that the cart had broken wheels. Shit. Well, with the snow, is it, can we use it like a sled? Can we with fix the, the wheels? You could surely try. Not making this easy there, are you, Phil? <laughs> okay. I say let's try and fix the wheels. Now, before you guys leave this room, you do notice that suspended from the ceiling um, of this chamber by a series of ropes and pulleys are also six baskets. Yeah, I'm going to look at the baskets before we, while, while Silas is moving the barrels. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go and try and fix the uh I gotta fix the wheels. I'm gonna leave the back. I make a mental note. I make a mental note to remind everybody that we need to keep these barrels away from Ocarus. <laughs> Is you said there was one that was open? We consider with that one. Yeah, there's a there's Ocarus a, can stay with the goats. Yeah. There's an open barrel here. Um you may be able to arrange for people from town to come get these casks. But you could also try to fix the uh, fix the wagon. Um, I say and... fix the wagon. We got boats that can pull. <laughs> so, but we we slaughter one of them, make a harness out of the skins, and then make the goats pull them back. Right? No, no, we didn't slaughter it. That was already slaughtered. It was already being roasted. Another one. We so that we have you, you need the leather rope. We have I, rope I, in our bag. Yeah. 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 Grab it over All right. So, Tia, as you let the baskets down, you discover uh, one of the baskets holds 72 silver and 344 copper. And Where did they come from? Copper. Where did they come from? Like, like, what's what's this rope and pulley and basket system? This is like the 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 giant storage system. He has a bunch of baskets that he had pulled up using ropes and pulleys into into the rafters of this cave. This was you guys are in his bedroom, which if you if you'd handled the encounter differently, you probably would have found him here sleeping. Uh, this is where the ogre right. sleeps. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Okay. Um, can I search around the room more, like closer, see if there's anything else of value in sure. the area? Yeah. Uh, you Investigation. A tremendous amount of rope, so you could probably build some harnesses if you wanted. This is in the baskets. Uh, a translucent pink moss agate gemstone worth ten gold. A healer's kit. A hunting trap. And a small rabbit skinned bag containing 10 silvered sling stones. So all you need is a sling and then you're ready to fight werewolves. Silvered sling stones.
There doesn't seem to be anything else really of value in this room other than those those barrels. Okay. Um, can I shimmy back over here to this uh, to the lake over here? Yeah. And go and take a closer look at the frozen guy under the water. So the, the uh, it's a uh, it's a stone statue. Uh, roll me a uh, religion check. Wow. Dripper Are you serious? Yeah. Dripper recognizes this immediately as the statue of Sylvanus. Um, and you've heard of things like this, of, of shrines in various places. Occasionally, they'll be blessed by their patron god. Um, and they might do something special. If you touch it or pray to it or something. How how far like like how much ice are we talking about here? Is it like solid right to the like how much ice? The seven foot deep pool is frozen completely. Right. Right. Okay. Um Okay, I go over to the other side and check this corner over here. Is it is if a there's a corner, corner of the cave. Of the cave, yeah. Yep. And the mouth, and the mouth of this. The mouth uh, also appears to have frozen solid. It looked like at some point this was a fresh water um, spring. Right. But the constant cold in winter has frozen it solid. Okay. Well, I guess I pay my respects to Sylvanus. Uh, Okrist offers to help you with uh, examining this and throws bonfires around the outside because she has conjure bonfire. Um, and the water starts melting. Uh, how are you paying your respects to Sylvanus? In a respectful way. Um... <laughs> Does he know what would be the traditional way to do that? Yeah, I did. I that's a good point. I did. I did roll a twenty. Twenty, yeah, twenty-three. Um, Sylvanus is a god of nature, so generally, uh, the the worship of Sylvanus revolves around natural type things. Okay. Um... I guess I, I guess I take out some dried berries out of my uh, ration kit or whatever and leave it as an offering. Okay. The and watch the water melt. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the water looks surprisingly clean. Okay. Uh. All right, you're leading me to drink it, so I'm just going to drink it. All right, I'll try some. You drink the water, and the whispers that have been plaguing you since you picked up the uh, sphere fade. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, I fill up my water skin with it. And it tastes very fresh and clear. And um, there's fires right next to it, but it, it still tastes very crisp. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to give Heels Above a shot of this, I think. Help her with the whispers in her head. But not all of them, because I think she still needs a few. Yeah. As, you know, as... <laughs> Some are Okay, well, I guess... Yeah. <laughs> I guess we wait for the uh, bonfires to uh, to melt down to the uh, statue, I guess. Okay. It takes quite a while because this is a very deep, frozen pool. Um, but uh, you leave your um, you leave your little offering on the shore. Um, the once uh, once Ochris sort of removes the, the the fires, you can tell the 
it is going to freeze back up again fairly quickly. But um, with the time you guys have spent exploring the cave, it is, um, it's basically unfrozen. But very cold. Okay. Can I see where the statue originally was? The statue appears to have been formed out of the rock of the bottom of this pool. What are you guys think? You think I should stand it up? Just stand it up instead oh, of having it laid down? It's standing. It's attached to the bottom of the oh, pool it and it's looking up towards the sky. I had no idea there was a person in the background of this photo. <laughs> You're lucky it wasn't a casting couch then, eh? <laughs> so it, is it looking at anything? Uh, you look up and it's just the top of the cave. Um, with your 23, you would know that that's a fairly traditional pose for Sylvanus. Okay, all right. Um, is it holding out its hand or anything like that? Or No. No? No? Okay, well, I guess I toss a couple of the berries that I left as an offering there into the pool, like, so that it, you know, it's on there, and I... Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. Yep. So, yep. Good to go. Okay. And as you head back and rejoin the rest of the group, uh, heels, give me a. You're trying to repair the wagon. So I've been a gardener all my life. I know how to work with carts and wheelbarrows and things like that. I'm sure I've come across broken wheels before. I have some proficiency with this. I hope. You don't have wood carving tools with you, but give me just a general survey. I have. Mm -hmm. I have something like that, though. Hang on. Okay. Jeez, we need an I artifact. Lot, I have a lot of crap. There's a lot of stuff that I took that I uh, and I bought. I, I have a hammer and I have daggers if you need to carve stuff. You said there was a mug that the ogre was using in the room. Can, how big is that? You said it was a, a stump of a tree or whatever? Yep. Can we use that to repair it? Like as, instead of a wheel? In place of the wheel? That sounds like a fairly reasonable solution. I have an axe that we use just to cut wood. Yeah, I'll bring her the the mug and say, "Hey, does it?" Or bring my brother him the wood and say, "Does this would this help?" It's round. Yes. yes. If we cut four rounds of this, we should be able to make that work. Okay. Why would you? Why wouldn't you just? Why wouldn't you just cut off the 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 cup part and just have the bottom piece? Like like the base. Of the cup. How many? Wheels are broken. Are all four wheels broken, or just one wheel? Good question. Picture looks like it's just one. Mm -hmm. The driver's side left rear, or driver's side rear wheel yeah. looks broken. Yeah, I was just going by the. Uh, yeah. I was just going by the. Picture. Let's go with that. The it's the back wheel that's that is broken. Will it be the same size as the other wheels, though? Otherwise, we can run into other encumbrances there. Mm -hmm. No, it's not going to be perfect. Um. Are you are you trying to make a replacement wheel out of this mug? Yeah, absolutely. We got to get this stuff back, and these goats need to get back, and we're losing daylight. Okay. Um, what is your intelligence bonus and your strength bonus? Int bonus is two. Strength bonus is one. Okay. So give me a d20 plus three, um, but with advantage from all the help you're getting from people. I'm literally just going to roll my con because it's a plus three. Nice. That's a great roll. All right. So using your axe, you separate the bottom of the um, of this mug 
you chop a hole in the middle of it and you stick it onto the the axle um and um try to try to get it to stay using mixtures of of things you find like some some rags and some of the skin from the goat so that it it stays on there um you think it will function it's probably not ready for any kind of like wagon racing event or anything no but it can help us get the barrels down or the goats are a combination thereof Mm -hmm. um spencer give me an animal handling check as you attempt to harness the goats and sheep to the wagon okay and then who is who's doing the knot work on the um makeshift harness that you're making i can help him with that okay i think that's um would that be a flight of hand yeah maybe you know what um i think it'll be survival but i'll let steve check it with sleight of hand when he gets back i'm here oh sorry you just leaned far enough back that you were under drippers uh <laughs> Sorry. Slight of hand, eh? Okay. Yeah. All right. You determined that the knots have been tied quite poorly. Um and uh offer to help re in, in retying them. This whole setup is fairly makeshift, but you manage to pile the three barrels into the wagon and begin heading uh back to town uh dripper did you say you were giving water to oh, keels yeah 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 i'm i'm gonna give her i'm gonna give her a drink of my water there okay the um the water causes the Thanks. whispers to cease which is good because now i don't have to remember what the hey. curse does <laughs> they stopped it got yeah, the quiet thing. And nobody else heard that. Nope. Not listening. I need to look up the Psy Crystal real quick here. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if... Um, Gripper's fixed now because of the spring. So what else did you guys find in here? Anything good? Just this water, the booze, goats. Oh, I found a statue of Sylvanus. Oh, nice. I relay everything over to everyone that I found. I think I'll go and leave Sylvanus an offering. She helped me farm out once. Whereabouts is it? I let you know. It's over there. Can you just ping the map? Uh, can you see Dave? I can see Dave. You can see where Dave is? He's I can't see Dave anymore, but oh. I will go and find him. Uh, it's this way? Oh, he's up. He's north. Okay, got it. I Oh, I see you guys. Okay, sure. Yeah, it's in there. I will leave. Shoot, I'll have to look that up later. Oh, to see if I have my your madness, what is this? Your madness, my madness, madness. The, the smartest, wisest, strongest, fastest, most beautiful person I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys load up the barrels. I'm gonna leave a bit of my floral samples that I've been collecting for Sylvanus. In awesome. thanks. That's amazing. Good work. You were saying, Phil. Uh, so you guys load up the casks of mead and start heading back to town. So the mead and the goats, was there anything else that was missing? I'm trying to no? 
Was no, that everything? Just the uh, the giant killed a bunch of people. So. Oh, so now no more killing. Good. Yeah. All right. So you gather up your flock of of goats and sheep as beasts of burden, and they pull the wagon with the three uh, casks in it slowly back to uh, town. As you get there, town looks sort of like this. I just need to switch to that in my stream as well. There we go. Um, yeah, feel free to put yourselves smack dab in the middle of the map. Uh, Ocarist volunteers to uh, help the um, the people of town make sure that the meat is is carefully stowed. And uh, of you course. guys, sorry, of course, but of course, yeah. Whoa. Wow, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Do you guys see that? Yeah. That's my window with the blur. Oh, I thought it was some kind of active thing you threw on. No, 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 it's, it's my window. Okay, right. so I found my background for work. <laughs> Psychedelic. As you guys arrive back in town, you notice that most of the uh, people from the village seem to have gathered around a fairly large bonfire in the center of town. Um, people are quite happy to take charge of the goats and the uh, and the mead, and they're quite thankful. Um, and uh, Olivesa, who is one of the people who had asked you to deal with this, offers you... Um, Offers you a place to stay in the inn overnight. Um, they're not holding hands and singing around this bonfire. Um, they do appear to all sort of be huddled around it. And as you arrive with the uh, with the supplies, you can feel the mood sort of shift slightly. And um, the uh, one of the things that you guys heard last time was that uh, Olivesa and Shander are sort of in a runoff for speaker of this town because their speaker has, has died. Um, so uh, Shander says, ah, with this excellent news, um, we should cease, um, cease our, our somber vigil uh, and, um, and do something a little bit more uh, exciting. Um, I will sponsor a competition. Uh, whoever, whoever writes the best poem entreating Oral to uh, to have mercy on us, I will give them this silver leaf. And he holds out a, uh, a small silver leaf uh, and sort of flashes it around and then tucks it back into his uh, into his vest. And he says, we need that leaf. He says, enjoy and uh, and, and thank the adventurers who have uh, who have brought back our mead so that we can continue to um, ship it to other towns and survive. I look at Ocarist and I'm like, we need that leaf. That's one of the leaves from the box. You have to write the best poem you've ever written. Or if any of you, any others, you have to be better than she. So we should all try and compete just to make sure? Yes. All right. So the people in town all begin sort of uh, muttering to each other. Um, now that the uh, now that the meat is back, their their vigil turns from this sort of somber, huddled around the fire, 
um, to almost like a party. And um, you hear people trying to um, trying to put together poetry. Uh, do you guys do you guys want two or three minutes to try to write something? All right. Yes. I'm going to mute the stream and put us in our our welcome thing and give you guys a few minutes here. The, um, yep. Oral, the person that's making the dark has come. Yeah. So the, the vigil was originally intended as a, um, a, the, the town sort of sacrificing, um, to, to try to get Oral to lift the darkness. And so now they've decided that maybe a poetry slam is is the best way to do that. So is that a uh, an ongoing theme? Me trying to get you guys to do things that rhyme. <laughs> First there was Bob. Now there's a, a a deep dark poetry slam. Yep. The, the the little village didn't help either, huh? Hey, look, there's a wagon. That's the wagon full of mead that you guys brought back. <laughs> yep i'm i'm ready for just uh, random rapping i'm i'm ready for it <laughs> oral what rhymes with oral Quarrel. Yep. <laughs> Barrel is an imperfect rhyme with oral. That's true.
Yeah, if <laughs> if you find a backing track for your poem, I think you win by default. All right, how are we doing for time? Do we need more? Okay. She should write a poem, yeah. The poem that would have been. <laughs> Can you guys tell this was what I was in originally intending to run last week when Catherine was here? <laughs> Feel free. I'm going to want that. So let me pull that up now. Nice. Better than never. <laughs> what what does it require to generate? Do, like do you just give it words or Okay, hang on. I gotta. This is gold. I gotta turn this back on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unpausing. Let her rip, Steve. Give yeah. it. A, give it to us again. All right, Steve. No. We're ready for your poem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> The title is <laughs> An Icewind Dale State of Mind, The Mead Hip Hop. Yeah, yeah, AO villagers, it's time. It's time, villagers. I eight villagers begin. Straight out of the white dungeons of rap. The snow drops deep as does my oral. I never murder because to murder is the mother of all sorrel. I, <laughs> beyond the walls of the people, life is defined. I think beer when I'm in. In an Icewind Dale state of mind. Nice. Hope the quirl got some moral. My coral don't like no dirty laurel. Run up to the oral and get the sorrel. 
and Icewind Dale state of mind. What more can you ask for? The sharp snow. You complain about goblins. I got to love it, though. Someone still speaks for the grow. I'm wrapping to the mead. I'm going to move. And I'm going to move your lead. Cold tree, mountain, like a winter. Boy, I tell you, I thought you were a minter. I can't wait. I can't take the goblins. Can't take the goat. I would have tried to save you, but I guess I got no boat. I'm wrapping <laughs> to the lead, and I'm going to move your mead. Yeah, yeah, in a nice Windale state of mind. That's freaking <laughs> amazing. That was a, like a like an auto-generated thing? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. There's more. There's more. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. We give a DCMA takedown notice. <laughs> when I was young, my brother had a forego, or my mother had a forego. I was kicked out without no blow. <laughs> Uh-oh. I never thought I'd see that flow. Ain't a soul alive could take my mother's hello. <laughs> A dagger knives is quite the Ives. Thinking of beer, yeah, thinking of beer. <laughs> so we get some of your character's history in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess, eh? Let's see how this copy and paste. I got fucking tears in my eyes. <laughs> that was that was not what I was, was expecting. A fully <laughs> conceived Icewindale state of mind rap. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Gather, Bravo. Gather needs a copy of that. All right, what else? Who wants to follow that? <laughs> I will because mine is short and sweet. All right. Four, four lines. Okay. Oral, we wish you no harm, though it seems you do to us. If you continue on your path, there will be nothing left, even for you. It would behoove you to release this winter's grasp. We will forever forgive you thus. With the true winter seasons will come celebrations and cherishings from us true. Nice. Yours was much more put together than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I could I could hear the backing track. Like I that's definitely gonna be a top I heard Ice Baby in the back. <laughs> That'll be a top ten on the D D forums for sure. All right, well, I guess I'll go next. Mistress Oral, bringer of darkness, fate that brings the cold and snow. Fear and death are your keepsakes, hunger and tears your joy. What is your desire? What drives your goals? When will this end? With everything dead or you? <laughs> All right, you got something, Spencer? Yeah, no, no. That's <laughs> that's why when when you'd asked who's next, I I put the the alarmed table flip in the chat saying, not me. <laughs> All right, so Catherine will have something uh, smashy. Well, almost. Yeah. Dang, those are good. It are it it auto generated uh, reviews auto praise for the Icewind Dale state of mind. Is it <laughs> I good? put them in the general chat. Yeah, yeah. If you only listen to one rap this year, let it be this one. Never before have I heard such a genius as to murder being compared to the mother of all sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, that was from DJ Great Awesome Rap Magazine. And then uh, a random web user with lots of opinions said, this sums up my feelings about Iceman Dale perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and uh, you shot us a link to the website that makes those, right? And the next time you see a bad Yelp review, think of this. <laughs> Yeah, because we should we should hype that website, like, because that was that was pretty stellar. It uses AI to generate it, right? You just feed it a couple of bunch of words. Yeah, and it uses AI to create the rap. <laughs> so what was the what was the site? Oh, it's it's in the Dungeons and Dragons um, channel there in um, in the uh, Discord. 
Oh, man. So it's just rap lyrics generator. Yeah, for like a place, I put in Icewind Dale, something you think about beer. I think about beer all the time. Why wouldn't yeah. I, right? Yeah. Something somebody might complain about, goblins. Who you're talking to? Villagers. Six nouns, oral, snow, winter, goat, meat, knives. A plural noun, people. Six adjectives, white, sharp, cold, tree, mountain, dagger. Two verbs, murder and save. And a type of relative, mother. So... <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. All right. So yeah, I think I think if you submitted a poem, roll a performance check, and that's how we'll pick the winners. Because they were all great. I didn't read hers because you guys' were too good. All right. Good job, heels. So uh, I don't know if that's worthy enough, but it still got us the freaking leaf. <laughs> so uh, as as everyone sort of finishes their their various poetry slams, Do you need to write or roll twice just randomly to see about other people oh, yeah, competing oh, yeah. against us. If I can, I don't think I can beat a twenty though. I'll give I'll give Catherine a roll, and if she beats it, then I'll read you guys the one I wrote. You wrote one. You have to roll or write it, read it for one of the other people in the town or something. Uh, kick sheet. If you made us read all one. You should read yours if you wrote one. <laughs> Ochrist wins. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank God it was for Oprah. If it was the townsfolk, I'd be like, Trish, way to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's the I'm one. I'm grumbling off my fucking brother. Here's the one that I wrote. I, yeah. Oh, oral of the frozen wastes, your winter has put us in our place. Held around fires and hearths are we to shelter from your freezing majesty. Your frosty famine wearies us to the bone. Take notice from your icy throne. In your honor, we hold this party. From your darkness, oh, set us free. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, Shandar gives, uh, shows up, and as the, as the townspeople vote, they end up choosing um, my, my placeholder poem for uh, Ocarist. And he hands uh, Ocarist a leaf. Um, the first thing you guys notice about this leaf is it does not look a lot like the other leaves. And you estimate that this leaf has a value of about 10 gold. And as you guys are, are enjoying the poetry slam, you hear from the north and the south of the village a growling noise. And the townspeople shriek and begin to scatter towards their houses as stalking into town come four large bears. I'm, uh, I'm really best of you guys. I will take initiative rolls, please. Oh, I forgot to click my token beforehand. Right. I can add you. Gripper. Oh. You said four bears, right? Yep. You may not see them yet. The You will see them fairly soon. Uh, Dripper, you got a 13. 13, yep. Okay, and we're just waiting for... Uh-oh, is it burnt? No. 
Trish is checking on supper. Uh, Sarah was making it, and instead of putting the timer for nine minutes, she set it for nine hours. So it's cooked then. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's still edible and not all charcoal. What was dinner? Pizza bites. Pizza bites. It wasn't in for nine hours. I smelt it, but it was smelt done and went and checked on it. Okay. <clears throat> so give me a, uh, a roll there, dear. You said four bears walked into town for no reason? Four bears have, have walked into town, yes. Uh, do you see any of them? Do you heard growling from the north and from the south? Um, well, Dave sees them. Dave sees them, so I see them. I let everybody kind of know the general, like, you know, where they are. There's two there, and then there's two over here. I'm not sure if you guys can see my pings because I think my ping is black. But they're over in this direction. <clears throat> All right, so Tia, it is your turn. Um, I'm going to tell the townspeople to get inside. Okay. The townspeople all scatter and are headed indoors. Are you doing anything else with your, with your turn? Um, we had a short rest. I think I'm going to pop my arms out. All right, so there's a shock wave of force as your arms pop out. Nope. Anything else? Um, can I hold an attack with my glaive for someone coming in close enough? Okay. You prepare an attack in case something gets close enough to you. It is now the bear's turns. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40. So, stump shambling into the light are large brown bears. And they don't get to attack this round, but they get uncomfortably close to Dripper. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Thank you. All right, you get to make an attack against the one brown bear. The other one is going towards Sill. They look aggressive, right? <clears throat> yeah, they're growling. They snap at some of the people that are um, are, are running by. Um, it looks like they are here for um, uh, to, to eat people. All right, that hits. Dripper, your turn. Okay. Um, I put my hood up, activate my cloak of displacement, and I have Dave. Uh, oop, Dave. Sorry. I have Dave distract this guy, help me. And I stab at him. Sorry, which one? The one, okay. this guy. And I booming blade cast on that guy. All right, that hits. Dealing 13 points of damage. <coughs> okay. And he is booming blade. What were we using for that? We use the potion. If sure. he moves All before right. your next turn. 
He takes an additional D8 damage, yeah. Yep. Okay, right. and I disengage. Okay. And I, and I move to here. All right. <clears throat> it doesn't take a bonus action to command your owl or anything, does it? No, I don't think so. Um... <laughs> Oh, where do I see that? Is it on Dave? Have a look at the spell, find familiar. I don't think it does, but just have a look at it for me. Sil, your turn. Uh, this turn, I would like to take the dodge action. Focus solely on giving them disadvantage to hit me. While giving them a mean, threatening <coughs> facial grimace. Rawr. Come get me, bear. It's like, you, you don't want a piece of this. <coughs> Heels, your turn. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm moving. Oops. I'm going to move here. And this bear... I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast on him. It acts independent of me, but it always obeys my commands. So, yeah. Okay. That will hit, actually. Like my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed her, her commentary. Well. <laughs> You'll have to teach me the ways of, of getting wives to obey commands. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. You didn't hear her commentary, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to do, Heels? Okay, Tia, your turn. All right. Um... I'm going to attack this thing. Okay. That'll hit. So you carve into this thing with the glaive, and then you follow up with an, one of your giant spectral arms over your shoulder and just punches it straight in the face, dealing another nine points of damage. It's looking a little beat up now. All right, I'll use a key point and hit him again. Okay, <clears throat> that's going to hit. It looks like another solid hit will take him down, but he's still standing. It is now the bear's turns. All right, so the bear is going to make two attacks on you, Tia. First, a bite attack. And then a claw attack. The claw attack is going to hit. Dealing eleven points of slashing damage. Um, still, the bear is going to make two attacks on you at disadvantage. Uh, so first the bite attack, and then the claw attack with disadvantage. Wow, rolled really well. <coughs> so still, you take. 12 points of uh, slashing damage as the claw hits you. Um, this one's going to close in on Dripper. This one's going to close in on Heels. Dripper so with this, disadvantage. This, oh, sorry? Well, that one there takes... Oh, right. Good call. Three points of damage. <clears throat> yeah, that disengage and run away once you booming bladed them. That's, I dig it. Well, yeah, it's just an extra little, you know, poke into it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely better than nothing. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, bite with disadvantage, misses. Claw with disadvantage, misses. Heels, bite. Ooh. And claw. Okay, both are going to hit. The bite has a crit. 
So the claw does 13 points of damage. And the bite that's a crit does 10 points of damage. And now it is Dripper's turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, I think. Um, I'm going to have Dave come in and distract him. And I'm going to attack it. Uh, my character sheet stopped working one sec. Okay, there we go. And the, and the uh, same thing with Booming Blade. <clears throat> Booming Blade doesn't work because you have killed the bear. Oh, okay. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. I immediately book to the other side of this brown bear to help out heals above. Okay. So uh, your turn. Like, like in a way to provide her advantage if she chooses to attack. Yeah. I think I got to move there into the doorway of that house or whatever. Sounds good. We're going to spin around to the other side of the bear. Yep. As I drop my war hammer. And as I land a crushing blow, I empower it with my paladin ability. Nice. Amp it up with 2d8 radiant. All right, so your Warhammer begins to glow with radiant energy. And it deals a total of... Oh, snap! 26. The bear goes from being large and in charge to... Um, pretty damaged. It's not quite dead yet, but it's looking close. Anything else? No, not dead yet. <laughs> I, I, I want to say no, but I'm going to say yeah, that's it. Okay. Heels, your turn. That bastard hit me. Twice even. I don't like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, for those who could read my lips. I forgot my reaction, but that's okay. I have... A quarter staff. Uh, roll me another d20, please. <clears throat> you have advantage. So you smash your quarterstaff into the side of this bear. It's mostly muscle. And you think you've heard it, but this thing is a really solid slab of meat. Um, anything else you're doing? Except for remembering my uh, reaction? No, I'm good. <laughs> Tia, your turn. All right, I'm going to um, use my glaive on this one. Okay. Your glaive, you spin around and carve straight into this thing's head and it collapses to the ground dead. All right, then I'm going to move over here and hit it with my astral arms. And I'm going to use a key point to hit it a second time. Okay. Both attacks hit. That's a total of 13 damage. It's looking pretty rough. And where's my... Where's my turn order? There it is. <laughs> All right, it is now the bear's turn. <clears throat> bear is going to attack Sill with a bite that hits. And that is D8 plus four, six points of damage. And then with a claw, which also hits, 
another eight points of damage. The other bear is going to keep going after Keels. First attack is a bite, which hits, dealing 11 points of damage. Do you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> nice. All right. Dex save. How many hit points does this thing have? Even if it saves, it's dead. So as it bites into you, this, your whole body just erupts in flame and the flame reaches out like a giant mouth of a hellhound and just clamps down on this bear and rips it to shreds. Yeah. And I whispered, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Dripper, your turn. Oh, there's still one left. Okay, I'm going to move to here, and I'll throw one of my daggers at it as I'm running. Okay. And I lost my character sheet, so give me a sec. Uh, Did your without it, so I missed. Yeah. So you throw the dagger and it misses. <clears throat> Well, it's engaged by Cilicely. I don't know if that matters. Uh, if, if you had hit, you would have had sneak. Right. Sil, right. your turn. You'll wind up, take a second swing. All right. Just enough. Describe the final blow on this bear. Very simple. Right across the top of the skull. Go to sleep. Boom. Uh, as you as you finish off this bear, you see some of the townsfolk sort of sticking their heads out of doors again and looking around questioningly. Um, they seem pretty happy about the uh, the meat that seems to have delivered itself to town. Um, you guys have uh, you are officially out of combat. What would you like to do? I'm going to yell to the townsfolk, come and get it, but we get the hides. Uh, good. I was thinking the same thing. I got a new rug. <laughs> All right. So the townspeople come out and start skinning and, and, uh, and butchering the, the bears. Um, are you guys doing anything while this is happening? Getting to know the townsfolk a little bit. Helping out where we can, where I can, because I don't know too much. Learning more about the anatomy of the bear and understanding how to skin better. Okay. As you guys are getting involved in this sort of social experience, you hear a strange sort of roaring noise that you've never heard before. And coming down off of the hills around the outside of the town, is this nasty-looking centipede creature that is headed towards the town, and the villagers all scream and um, and run. Yeah, go ahead. Again, uh, headed indoors. Um, do I see which way the two people going for speaker are headed? Like... Um, only Vesta seems to be headed somewhere, um, nearby and, uh, Shandar is headed towards the, this building over here, which is where the meat is stored. Okay. I'm going to, um, tell Ochris to follow, uh, one of them and ask if there's, they can think of any reason why the town would be under attack over and over again. This is, seems unusual to me. Silk can take five. I will take two, and Tia, you take one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and with that, you. you will take a new um, initiative. 
since Okris isn't able to help out anyways, she can go and figure out if there's something that would make sense in this case from them, right? I like this creature because I'd never really run into it before. So it's going to have I also, a bunch of surprises for everybody. I suggest everybody get, a, get away from the bears to save the meat. Okay. Can we move before it gets here? Or yeah, feel free matter. to uh, readjust yourselves. You have basically one turn. <laughs> you and I went the opposite direction. <laughs> which way? Uh, which way is it coming from? The south of the north. Which way did we hear the sound from? East. Oh, from the east. Okay. Do you see it? Weird sort of centipede. Yeah, type I see it. I see mantle. it. I yelled to the people in this house, move the bear. Okay. At least save save one of them. Do something with it. Okay. And the, the creature is headed in your direction. But first, Tia, what would you like to do? Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else in the way between me and it? Can I, I can see it clearly, straight line You can sight. see it clearly. It's in a straight line. It's, uh, it's coming down the, the rocks there. The rocks are about 10, 15 feet high. So it's actually further away from me than 30 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20, just a little bit. Yeah. But you're a monk. I don't know if you can run up it, walls yet. Or if not. I... It's not my plan. Uh, if I step forward here, can I still see? Because it's pretty big. Um, am I definitely within 30 now? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do um, light, lightning. Oh, no, not that one. The, the lightning breath. This one. Oh, okay. And it needs to make a dex save. Uh, it makes a 19 for the dex save. Uh, so it's going to take half damage, but it does take the damage. That takes four points of damage. And then I'll back up. Um, sort of here, so that maybe it'll come in between all of us. Sorry. There's a dog outside. All right. It is now the young Remmer has his turn. And it is going to uh, come down the hill towards the creature that attacked it. I'm gonna move this oh, that's convenient. Bear. Came right to us. Mm -hmm. And it is going to make an attack against Tia. It opens its mouth and you can see steam rising out of the creature's mouth as it reaches towards her. That is going to hit. This thing hits hard. It deals 16 points of piercing damage and six points of fire damage. Okay. Um, and it you can feel heat coming off of its body in waves. And Dripper, it is your turn. Okay, I'm going to move opposite of Arimathea. Okay. I figured this is opposite. Right? Yep. Yeah, I think. That works. 
and this is like a worm centipede kind of thing, right? Yeah, this centipede that's radiating heat. That's radiating heat. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm going to backstab it. Okay. Roll an attack with advantage. And you do not manage to connect. You swing your dagger, and as you get close, you can feel the heat coming off of it. It's pretty intense, but you, you don't manage to hit it. <clears throat> um, anything else you want to do? Um, no, I think I'm okay. Okay, Sil, your turn. I use my channel divinity to invoke primal forces to ensnare the foe. As an action, I cause spectral vines to spring up and reach for the creature. Uh, save versus strength or dex, it's choice, or be restrained. It rolls a 24. Bark. That was a good idea. Um, that's your action, right? Yep. Uh, we'll on, on a success, it frees itself and the vines vanish. So vines sort of lash up from underneath the snow and wrap around this creature. And where they're touching its body, they sort of blacken and fade away. Okay. That was Sill. Heels. Your turn. All right. I'm going to pull out my wand of the, my, my new wand. Yeah, wand of the And I'm going to spend my, yeah, wand of the war mage. I'm going to spend my action to activate it. The wand of the war mage gives you a plus one to hit and damage with ranged attack spells. Yep. But I still need to use the turn to activate it. Does it? Huh? Yeah. While you're holding this wand, you gain a plus one bonus to spell and attack rolls. No, you just need to cast a spell yeah. that has a spell to hit. Odd. Okay, because when, oh, when I read it out of the book, it said something different. Yeah. This that That's the bit that I copy and pasted from uh, uh, roll 20. Yeah. All right. So while I'm holding the wand. Does it require attunement? That's a good question. Nope. Not okay. that I'm aware of. Wand of the war mage. No, I don't see the A beside it. it it's not. just green. You're good. No. All right, so you get I am add a plus one to your Eldritch Blast. Exactly. Or any other ranged attack spell. So. Plus one to spell attack rolls. Yeah. I think this has been modified. If it doesn't work, let me know. Yeah, looks good. All right, so you turn and blast four force damage into this creature. Um, it's taken two hits from you guys. It doesn't look like it's slowing down at all. This thing looks beefy. Uh, what else are you doing? You still have a bonus action and movement. I am parking myself where I am because I'm not within range. So I think, actually, I'm going to take one step back. And, um, yeah, I'm good for right here. And I'm going to, I don't have a bonus action on it. Okay. Tia. All right. All right, you swing out and slash it with your with the glaive and as you cut into it its blood sprays out and you can see steam rising off of it immediately you get some of that blood on you you deal eight points of damage but you take 10 points of fire damage oh yeah screw this can i'm not I, can i hit it before i go down with my arms or not um you're a monk. You're pretty fast. So, yeah, I'll give you... Because I would have been... They're, they're arms separate from my weapon, so I would have been attacking... Yeah, I'll give you the... Um, uh, yeah, the sort of simultaneous. Attack. Thank you. I'm a zero. Tia is on the ground. The Remmer has is... Uh, flips around and is going to attack Dripper. 
with disadvantage because of your cloak. It misses, and it is going to take a couple steps upwards like that, because Tia is unconscious. Uh, Dripper, your turn. Okay, I I I don't like getting hit <laughs> <laughs> or burned or anything. I got feathers. Um, oh, if I don't stay in range, though. Okay, well, I'm going to move here so that I continue to get flank. advantage. Yeah. Yeah, flank. And I'm going to attack it with my dagger venom with, um, I might as well throw a booming blade on there as well. Okay. This time you connect. Dealing 16 points of damage. And then we'll throw the um, thing on there. Remind me if it moves. And you take, as you cut into it, you take nine points of fire damage as it splashes its heated blood on you. Um, and anything else you're doing? Um, yeah, I'm going to disengage and step back Okay. over to here Sounds and pull up my bow as I'm moving back so I can attack with the bow. good. Sil, what are you doing? Uh, noticing a splash of fiery goodness, question mark, coming out of this uh, as T and Dripper have hit it. I, I'm not going to hit it with a weapon. I'm going to cup a fart. Oh, okay. I dig that. Con save. It rolls a seven, so it's going to take the five points of damage. Uh, are you doing anything else? I want to, but I only got one slot left. Okay. Heels. Sorry. Is it Sorry, Spencer, you were saying? Playing the safety. Yeah. Heels, your turn. Your brother is on the ground. Sister. I see that. Sister. My sister is on the ground, so I am not pleased. So he's going to eat something, and she's going to come back to life. Okay, I need a second d20 roll, um, because you're in melee so your eldritch blast is uh okay so nine 17 plus eight 17 yeah that's gonna hit uh so that deals two points yeah because i'm at i'm now base to base but it's a ranged attack so you shoot a side away from you and the gore sprays out in that direction yeah it's a Force damage is like a punch. Yeah. But she shot away from herself, so the gore splashed away from her. Uh, like in this area. <laughs> Alright, so Tia is up with three hit points. And it is now Tia's turn. That's fine for now. Awesome. Tia, I did throw you a um, healing potion, by the way. Remember? A while ago. Last session. So you do have a healing potion for me. Which you could drink as a bonus action if you'd like. Do I? I don't have it on my list. I did remove it from my equipment, though. And I never got it back from you, so you still did have Did I it. drink it last time, though? No. Nope. Okay, then, yeah, uh, for a bonus action, I will... Ooh. I'll do that. Yeah, I have potion of, potion of healing from Dripper to Tia. On the okay. loot sheet. So it's a D4 plus 2? 2D4 plus 2? Yeah. So 8 hit points back. I'll do that. Okay, and then... Um, 
because I can reach, I'm going to hit it with my glaive at a distance and hope that the blood doesn't splatter that far. All right. Uh, you do not connect with the with that attack. But that is your turn. Do I get advantage from where I am or not until, unless I come up closer? Yeah, you need to be closer. All right, just checking. All right. The Remmer has is going to... Uh, one, two is heals. Three, four is sill. Is going to attack sill. And miss. And that is its turn. Dripper. Okay, I'm going to shoot out with my sharp roll. Okay, booming blade fades. Yep, and that is not with advantage, but it is with sneak attack. Right. Wait a second. 16 hit. Yeah, 16 does hit. And it does 18 points of damage. You can see the creature is starting to look wounded. Uh, anything else you're doing? Um, not getting close to it. So no, I, I think I'm pretty good. Okay. That was a test. Yep. Sill. Another cup of fart. Second verse, same as first. That's a pretty crappy roll. I have an inspiration, but I can't use it on that, right? Uh, no. Just, just attack rolls and yeah. skills. You have a DM inspiration. Uh, well, I got that yellow dot on me from last uh, session that we played. I don't have a comment on it of where it came from. Well, the, those yellow dots come from Ocarist, and it has been long enough that it would have faded by now. Okie dokie. Um, it rolled a five, so it did not save against your cup of fart. It takes one! One point of damage, which is better than none. Uh, heals. All right. All right. I see your trickeries. Give me one second. I think I've got this correct. <laughs> Intelligence save. That's not going to go well. Okay. Minus two from next saving throw, and it takes four points of damage. All right. Anything else? If mage armor was a bonus action, I'd be all in. But no, I'm good for now. <laughs> all right. And everybody still has hit points, so they're up. Yep. Tia, your turn. All right. Again, I'm going to assume that I'm far enough away from any splatters. That one's going to hit. As you carve into the creature, you see blood spray out, but it does, it does not, not reach you. I'm also going to use a key point for the astral arms. Okay, you get two really solid uh, hits in on this thing. It is looking pretty rough. It is the Remmer has his turn. Um, it's going to turn and snap at heels. Okay. Heals, you take 21 points of piercing damage. I'm just going to have a nap. And six points of fire damage. Oh, I'm just sleeping. Yep. You are sleeping and hurting. Dripper. I'm going to shoot another arrow. I'm not sure. Uh, 13 points of damage. All right. Describe how you dispatch this thing with the with your last arrow. Who was it attacking last? Heels? It just savaged heels. Heels is down and out right now. So as it was lifting its head to turn towards Silasley, mm -hmm. I shoot it in the eye. And it goes in one eye and comes out the other eye. So now it's just like sitting there with this 
and there's and this dies. spout of of hot caustic blood that just splurts along with the arrow. The arrow, as it, after it flies through, catches fire, and then lands on some cobblestones. Okay, so your, your elaboration just cost me an arrow. I hope you realize that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, still did not get splattered with blood. That would that would be really unfair. <laughs> I wouldn't say no. Are, are already unfair. Sorry. Usually you get to keep arrows when they're successful attacks. I apologize. I gotta Hang on out. one second. Oh, it's my turn. It's my turn. You gotta wait. Yeah. I have hellish resistance. I have resistance to fire damage. You're still down because you were down from the piercing. Uh, Sil, your turn. I, I take w one step to the side and I, I tap heels. Hey, no nap time now. Wake up. <laughs> and I lay on hands. I, I give her five points. I give him five points. All right. Heels, you're up. All right. So for those two fights, that was 650 experience. And who was asking questions about why this happened? I sent Ocarus to ask questions. Okay. You roll me a religion check. Yep. You said 650? Is that 650, yep. 5245? Five, five. That's what I have. Can't confirm. Right. You hit level four a little while back. You guys are at five thousand. You need to hit six and a half. So you're almost at five. I have fifty two forty five. That's what still has too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean level five. Okay, while yes, this is going there. on, I'm watching to see if anything else is coming, creeping up on us. I rolled a 16 for religion. Yes. Um, so you remember earlier when you guys were watching the first um, ritual that you saw, that it felt all sort of slapdash and put together by people who didn't really know what they were doing? Um, you get the feeling that this whole sort of poetry slam possibly did attract Oral's attention? It was because of my rap, wasn't it? The the the, the rap was gold. That was that was beautiful. It was all the all the other poetry that uh, I think <laughs> I think my favorite was the death threat at the end of Trish's. That might have done it. <laughs> Leave us alone, or we'll kill you. <laughs> I like that. All right, and uh, we're just hitting quarter after seven. So I think we're going to call it here and pick up next time uh, as you guys continue your journey on to. Can we take a full rest before we call you it? You can take a long rest here. Yeah. Um, uh, guys... Can I find something to identify the pearl thing I found, the, the sphere? You find some people in town who help you out. It is a pearl of power. Once per day, it will restore up to three levels of uh, spell slots. So you could take that as a level three, you could take that as a level two and a level one, or you could take that as three level ones. It does require an action to use. And, and you need attunement. And attunement. <sighs> okay. <laughs> That'd be pretty badass. Yeah, but not so much on me though. Anybody else want it? Or can think of I already have I already have one. I could use one, because I cast spells. No. Nave gave me her gave me hers. Do you have the attunement Or slot? at least give me one. Yeah, I haven't attuned anything other than the belt. Okay. All right, I toss it over to him. Because, I mean, I don't see how having three extra Tasha hideous laughters are going to help us, you know, over over a little bit more healing, you know? <laughs> but six, six D8 of bonus radiant damage, that could be handy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was wondering who would end up with that. Or, 
or or cure wounds. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, three more cure wounds can't hurt. Can you cast no. three spells yet? Yes, I, I've got three three level one slots. Okay. Uh, at level five, I get a an extra one and two twos. Nice. And I also get moonbeam. So we are taking a long rest, though, right? Yes, you're taking a long rest. The villagers have agreed to put you up. Um, in the bag of holding, put four bear pelts. Oh, did we get anything for bringing back all of their stuff? The mead and the Let and the goats and stuff. Let me check that. I don't. I believe it was a you can stay here for free kind of thing. They didn't have much. But you found a bunch of awesome stuff in the cave. So, um, the mead must flow. Um, I missed something you were guys were supposed to get in the cave, so I'll say the town pays you 75 gold. Nice. I Tell me to add it to group. Each or in total. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be specific. Yeah. <laughs> Every other town so far has been like, here's three gold, here's four gold. Yeah. Yeah, we should add it to group loot. Done. Okay, guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's where we'll call it. No. I'm hit. That was fun, friends. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, two weeks works, or no, next week at mm -hmm. two work at two thirty works for everybody. Does for me. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll get back on track here with less poetry slams. <laughs> well, we need at least one more. Yeah, Catherine can't be dissed twice. Completely out of it. Yeah, we'll 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 hear what she puts together. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night, guys.